How's that? <laughs> welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to a gigantic teardown. We've got a couple of guitars and we cannot figure out how they make them so cheap. We've put them all on the table and we're going to compare them to some guitars that are not really cheap. Um, these guitars are... Oh, I haven't introduced us yet. Oh, I'm Josh and this is Sophia. Hello. These guitars, Fairclough. Faircloth. Fairclough. Fairclough, I think, are a strange company that I can't seem to find much about them online. Um, I don't even know how we acquired these guitars. I think Ben was sent them from the guys or something like that. But we got them through and we checked them out online. And they are so, so cheap. The Fender style is 150 quid. That's insane. Eh? Which is just so... It's not even just the materials. Yeah, Surely, I know. It costs. And, then, and then this one is 200 quid. So we just thought, how the beeping beep do they do that? And the best way to do that is to take them apart and have a look at them. Well, we're essentially comparing this one with an actual American standard Fender. And then we've got three or four yeah, different we've got three or four Les Pauls. Pauls. Yeah. So we've got a, the Fairclaw, yeah. Fairclough. Yeah, Gibson, low end, 200 quid. Yeah. Then we've got the Epiphone, yes, Les Paul. The Epiphone Les Paul, which is about between like it's quite a big range between about four and eight hundred quid. Mm. And then Gibson Les Paul, yeah, classic. We got two of those. So we're talking Gibson Les Paul classic. We're talking like between twelve hundred and eighteen fifty, mm. something like that. So a huge, huge range. I guess let's start with construction, shall we? Straight off the bat, straight off the bat. Finish. Oh, that you just want to talk? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, you know, first thing that you notice about it, it's just that it's a good finish. Yeah. <laughs> like, and we were, we were saying just a minute ago, it's so weird because the finish is one of the hardest things to achieve to get a decent finish. Mm. And this finish is stunning. I was lit here. This is one of the places where you, the, the quality can go down the toilet and it just does not. There's like no splat, there's no grime, there's no sanding marks or anything there. I just, I don't think that you, I can't fault the finish. Let's get the Epiphone. Four to eight hundred quid guitar. Now, this is a slightly different finish. This is a bit more of a satin finish, but we're not talking about that. We're just looking for defects. Again, it's a stunning, it's a really stunning finish. I quite like, like that sort of satin. Yeah, I do too. Feel. Let's talk about materials. So, on the on the fair cloud, I keep getting the name wrong. We've got a mahogany, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sophia. It does look like it. But we think that it is potentially a slightly lower grade of mahogany. At the school, we use Fijian mahogany and African mahogany. The Fijian mahogany is lighter in weight and in shade, and I wonder whether this is similar. I mean, I know they've been stained. Much, much deeper, darker color. This one much lighter. And I do wonder whether this might be a slightly lower grade of mahogany. Um, so we've got mahogany construction, neck and bod. And then we've got the tops. So we've got a flame top on here, presumably a maple. We've got definitely a flame maple on this Gibson, which is absolutely These, gorgeous. Those actually. flames are a lot nicer. And again, I mean, I, I guess we'll, we could, we might be able to tell when it's being weighed, but yeah, it could be, as you were saying before, that this is a veneer, which is obviously going to cut cost. Yeah. Because you can buy a lot of veneer. We've still got veneered headstocks. We've still got rosewood fretboards, and there's really not that much difference in the quality of these slabs of rosewood. Not much at all. So, I don't know, you know, I don't know what to say. It's like, like they're, they're like for like, potentially, apart from maybe the quality of the mahogany. If it even yeah. is mahogany. And I guess hardware pickups, even just the smoothness of that. Well, yeah, I suppose let's move on. We, we could move on to hardware. Maybe, That's maybe this is where they're saving money. Is mm. Penny pension. The, that's where the penny pension mash. So these, for a set of these, brand new, Wilkinson humbuckers. 
They're like 46, you can get them for 46 pounds. Yeah. I saw. And yeah. these for, well, I found it's some online. Like 170 plus, mm. basically. Depending on what you go for. But I imagine that if you're buying them separately, then it's yeah. from 170. And I think that we should plug them in and just hear the tone difference. Yeah. Should we take off this um, plastic? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. I'm gonna use a different Gibson. Um, it's still an American, but because this one is actually a repair that's come in and the headstock has snapped off. Um, that's actually something we were talking about, is that if you're using a lighter, um, a less tough timber on a Les Paul, might you get big problems in the future with the old headstock coming off, which you know seems to have happened on an American made of really good quality mahogany. And this is gonna be our, this is gonna be our American representer, the ambassador for Gibson pickups. But I think, should we plug it, should we plug in the, uh, I keep forgetting the name. Fair, Fair Clow? Fair Clow. We think that's what it is. Hey, you having fun with that? Oh no, I'm doing this really badly. <laughs> Don't worry really about badly. It. Don't worry it's about like it. It doesn't matter. Underneath. It'll come. God, Sophie, you can do it. Uh, Go on, mate. Go on, mate. My little uh, fingers. Uh, oh, there we go. That was a good oh, idea. That was a... now, sorry for the like non hi fi experience. We don't have our usual setup here. But let's just give it just a, a little strum on each pickup. Okay, so here we go. Bridge. Bit, a gain? Bit. There's quite a lot of gain on there. Should I turn the gain down a bit? Mm. Okay, here we go. Let's try again. Middle. And bridge. Okay. I'm, I'm predicting that we might get higher output on these, but it's anyone's guess. We may not. Ah, oh, see that to me has already just got bags more grunt. Ah, oh, man, I, I don't know what you think, but I think that's no contest. Should we just do one more AB? It's not bad for two hundred quid, but is it? that definitely yeah. sounds better. Quick synopsis then. So far, we've got construction, kind of timber, possibly like for like, but we'll see about the mm. top. We've got the finish, like for like, mm -hmm. more or less. We've got pickups, definitely, definitely suffer from having cheaper pickups in, one hundred percent, but still. You know, completely, completely passable. I should we weigh them? Yeah, let's weigh them. Fair cloud fair first. Fair cloud. Okay, so fair cloud. We're gonna go old school. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, seven pound nine. Let's call it seven pound nine. Seven pound nine. Seven pound nine. Can I see you in my nine? Seven pound nine. Cheers. Woo. Okay. I mean. Yeah. I reckon. I reckon we might not be far off with this kind of this mahogany diagnosis. We didn't talk about machine heads. I suppose we should probably have a quick look at them and obviously hardware. It's kind of hard to compare because this is really old and, and foggy, but I'm gonna just make a stab and say, you know, we've got these like unbranded machine heads, which, you know, are a bit like meh, whatever. They kind of, they work. They don't feel, they don't feel I don't feel wibbly or chonky at all, but no doubt you've got cheaper hardware, so that's where they're saving money as well. We should probably look at the electronics cavity and we're also going to take the pickups off. But Sophia, shall I, can I ask you to maybe do that, like get, mm. get these off, yeah. loosen the strings up, get these off so we can have a look inside. When you pick up a guitar and play it, you can feel, you can feel differences in quality mm. that are quite hard to quantify. They're yeah. quite hard to like talk your way through. 
you know you can you can you can feel when a component feels yeah. well made versus feels really badly it's made. It's like it just feels solid and good in your hands really. It's like buying a nice chisel in comparison to a cheap one. It just feels nicer to use. Yeah. I mean, and it doesn't sound very kind of scientific when you when you talk no. about it like that. But you know, there it is. I mean, another thing that makes you wonder is, you know, if the price difference is this extreme, yeah. And there's only a few things that could make it better, then it's like, you know, what's stopping people from buying something like this and then replacing the pickups to something a lot nicer to get something that sounds more like that? Yep, absolutely. Because also, that's one of the things, in my opinion, which is making it look pretty cheap, is these ugly pickups. But they're, yeah. just, they're just, they're just ugly. That's yeah, <laughs> like, they're ugly. They're ugly. They're just ugly. I, I shouldn't say this. But I'm gonna Go is well. I just agree with you. I, I agree that if you are really worried about your tone and your tone over everything else, then you want to be worried about your pickups. <gasps> I mean, I know, I know. But seriously, like I do think in the grand scheme of things, when you're talking about electric guitars, the most important things are the pickups. And the amps that you're playing through, so I I can curse it fear. I thought I could get away with not taking the strings fully off. I mean, my strings will just break. What am I like? Here, you can see we have a whacking great slab of quarter sawn Ooh. flame maple. So yeah, you know, there's there's nothing there's nothing spared on that. Got some nice braided wiring. Now I happen to know that these are the slightly slightly more expensive um, components used for pickup making. The when they're like uh, kind of bronze in colour, they tend to be cheaper. Uh, don't ask me why, but Sam, our chief pickup maker, told me this the other day. So I can already tell that they are using slightly better quality components for their pickups. Let's see what we've got on the Fairclaw. Whilst you're getting these strings off. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about fret work? There are two things that we haven't mentioned. One is where these are made. So this one is made in China. This one is made in the States. So you've obviously got a huge amount of cost cutting there uh, just from having it in a country where you can afford to pay people obscenely low wages um, and a country where you can afford to pay people slightly less obscenely low wages. Construction wise, from a maker's point of view, one of the places you can really cut corners and save some money is on your fret work. I think this will become a bit more apparent when we look at the strats. Because for a start on this one, this has had a refret. You can tell this has had a refret because there's no little plastic steps going up to the frets like they're normally would be. So this is a bit of a red herring. But let's have a look at the frets on let's have a look at the frets on here. What do you reckon Sophia? What they're mark the, would you give not, them out of ten? They're not the worst I've ever felt. What are you feeling for there? I'm feeling for, for the, the edge of that. Yeah. I don't personally like the shape of the side of the frets, but that's just they've, well they've got quite a um they've got quite an angle on them haven't they mm. meaning that your strings might well start falling off mm. they are um, they are quite scratched i mean that's another thing isn't it is that yeah you know i'm sure you have as well but i i know that i've done you know fret fret jobs on guitars that it's just the frets are so cheap that as soon as you put the strings back on it looks like you've done a terrible job because they just scratch yeah yeah the metal. absolutely and i think that could be one of the things because that is pretty scratched. Also, I can nearly get my plectrum underneath the gap underneath these frets. Mm. Um, oh, what's that? There's glue um, and gunk and stuff, but basically these, these frets, these frets are not properly seated. Whether they move or not, I'm not sure. I don't know, I'll have a proper look in a minute. They could do with the polish. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty uggo. So, <laughs> So when you do frets, uh, you take off the little sharp point down here with a fret file, and then you round over this kind of crest here, just ever so slightly, um, and that stops it from being super sharp. 
that is that tends to be one of the things that doesn't get done. Uh, again, it's a bit of an unfair comparison because it has all the little, it has the, the plastic binding ends which do protect your fingers. But I can already see that these are way better seated. Mm. There's no gaps underneath there to speak of. Nothing like the fair clown. Yeah, fret work. That's a big money saver. The join between the two, whether it's veneer or the two plates, oh, yeah. looks terrible. So they've probably just done a crap join and then just shoved it together with as much pressure as possible. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that, you shouldn't really be able to see a glue line. You should only be able to see the difference between the grain matching. Yes, that's very true. Yeah, you can see that that, that is, that's gappy, isn't it? Mm. That's like, that's glue, that's glue you're looking at there, not wood. Let's see, what do you reckon? Do you think it's going to be a veneer? Maybe. That the is, weight that difference is, not, is just, yes. <gasps> Can you see around this side? Oh yeah. Yeah, it is a veneer. Um, one, two, three, so it's, the top is made up of various pieces spliced together, which makes sense. You know, if you're going to put a veneer on it, then why not? And um, there's a veneer on the top. So yeah, there you go. As we suspect. That makes sense in the weight difference to be fair. Yeah, it does. Cause who knows, who knows what this, this Ooh. timber is down here. Yeah, splodgy, isn't <laughs> Take it? Take a look at this. It's just like, like there's a whole bunch of just like, <laughs> it's even like a hole. Is that a... PU glue that, that's in there? That, that like, Insane expanding stuff. Oh, what, a, what a wreck. What a train wreck. All right, well, I'm not sure there's much else to say about these guitars. I think in the summation, we know where they're cutting costs. They're cutting costs in the location of the factory. They're cutting costs, costs on the pickups for sure, the hardware a bit, um, and the fretwork. But if you put American pickups in this guitar... And take it in to Crimson Guitars for a refret. Correct. Then, yeah, you're going to have you're gonna have something that feels very, very similar. I, I want to hate it more, but I just don't really actually hate it at all. Well, it's hang so on. Cheap. I'll tell you what is... I'll tell you what adds up is, is that... that... How much money did Gibson have to spend on advertising and... Mm. I don't know. Uh, just like massive amounts of distribution and that kind of thing. I mean, they've got so much money to claw back. Mm. Um, you know, maybe Gibson's shouldn't be eighteen hundred quid. Maybe we're maybe we're looking at this wrong. Maybe it's not like, but they're worth eighteen hundred quid. Yeah. So how can this only be worth two hundred? Maybe it's more like mm, maybe Gibson's probably not quite worth that. But then you know, so yeah. It's probably all the people that they have to hire to answer the phones of. My head stop snap <laughs> to tell people to not ring them for that reason. A lot of wages to pay that. That is true. That is true. That's exactly what it is. We've sussed yeah. it out. We've solved Problem it. Problem solved. Video ended. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Let's move on to uh, let's move on to these guys. What are your eyes detecting? I don't like the plastic. Serious feels, whiteness, isn't it? Serious whiteness. Seriously that, white. That feels cheap to me. Yeah. The pickups are the same brand as the other Fairclough ones, but I guess we can yeah. see how they sound. The paint, again, the paint is probably the best thing about it, I reckon. Mate, I'm with you. I like, totally look agree. At that. It's bloody spot, like spotless. And we all know you like blue sparkles. I do. Mm. And even better blurple sparkles. But. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. The finish is the finish is fantastic. I mean, I would say that that's of the same quality. I mean, how yeah. it is when it takes a little ding, I don't know. Maybe that's going to be the difference in quality and the finish. Um, we've got the, the timber that they're using for the construction of the guitar itself. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what this is, but I would guess that it is poplar or ash. Um, depends how old it is. I would be interested to see what that is made of. Mm. We could loosen the strings and take the neck off. It's probably worth doing. Should we weigh them first to see if we can like, yeah. see if that gives anything away timber wise. Cause this is, this feels really light. That's just got so much more about, so much more about it. And if we just have a look at the, the colors of the fretboard as well, 
I do think that having just like stark, stark white just makes it look really cheap. It could even just do with a bit of a tint. Yeah, like exactly. A, like a nitro tint over it or something. Yeah, totally. Just a bit, just of, a bit of discoloration. Fender weight. Seven pounds, 15 ounces. I reckon it's gonna be like just under <laughs> three pounds. Just under seven. Yeah. Yeah, six pounds and eight ounces, so a fair bit under seven. So yeah, there's definitely something going on there. Less dense. Oh, hang on, before we take the strings off, shall I make some noises out of them? Oh. Sorry. Yeah, do you want me to tune it back up? Give me an A. Yeah. Right, I feel like I wanna... No, let's do the Fender first this time. We did the, we did the cheapy one last time. So let's just do a quick run through. Again, apologies for the non-hi-fi sound, but you know. Two main, two main positions, let's say. Nice, got that nice throatiness. Let's go Hank Marvin. That fell off. To me, that, that's what I would want the Strat to sound like. Um, as Sophia said, well, these, yeah, everything's feeling, yeah, the, the switch feels pretty nice. Let's have a little. You're gonna have to tune it up with the amp. Oh yeah, that's in, fine. A little that's bit. Fine. It's got that problem that I find with all this is this got nothing to do with anything apart from my issue with strats that when you're muting my pinky turns down the volume. It's too close. Look. Look. Yeah. See? Down it goes. That's stupid, isn't it? I don't know how that's never annoyed anybody before, surely. <laughs> St just stay on these pickups a sec. These sound these sound great. I think these sound good. They sound Yeah. I think these pickups sound really good. I do wonder whether like it's easier to make cheaper single coil pickups because they're inherently like a bit thinner sounding. Mm. It definitely doesn't sound bad. No, it like... doesn't sound bad at all. You've got all those tones that sound like you'd want a Strat to sound like. I don't know, I think it's pretty good. I'll tell you what I did notice, like jumping forward a bit and out of order to what we did before, but these frets are horrible. <laughs> Run your um, fingers down there, Sophia. If you dare, they're really sharp. Yeah, that's not nice. No. That definitely makes it feel cheap. Yeah. Okay. So should we should we have a look inside this and see what the body is? Yeah. Okay. We should have one of those Take like look. see a stumac. They like they just get their Ooh. drills out, wouldn't they? And they'd be like, Ooh. Where's that gone? <gasps> Where's that screw gone? Did you hear anything? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Wow, this is the best guitar ever. So maybe they've got slightly cheaper hardware? I mean, when I undid the string, it broke. So I don't know where that... Let's see, it, let's see if it happens to all the rest of them. No, I think what must have happened is that they... Where has it gone? They had, they had the saddle so far forward that the... Yeah. Which means that may, the, um, the bridge might actually be in the wrong place. Um, that's a good way of saving money. 
not bothering to work out where your bridge needs to go. They are all really far forward, to be fair. Yeah, well that's not good. I hate the plastic, it's my worst thing about this whole guitar. Yeah. And especially with the super uber bright coloured neck. Yeah. You know, it's like... It's what are you plop. doing? That's what it is. Yeah? It's plop. Here we go. Oh, brilliant. No clues. No clues. Uh, should we just have a look at the quality of... Yuck! <laughs> Yucky. Yeah. Okay, so we've got really dull solder. You want you want nice you want nice bright looking solder joints. Um, dull ones can tend to fail. Okay, so yeah, that's that's pretty rubbish. And oh, look. Can we see what wood it is? It's really hard to see what kind of wood it is. I mean... It's going to be something low quality and cheap though, isn't it? Because that's also where the weight is being saved, I reckon. Oh, yeah, 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 100%. Yeah, these components all feel really cheap and light and nasty. But, you know, I feel like, I feel like we've already said that. I don't want to go banging on about it. Should we take the neck off? Yeah. Let's see if it's got fender quality neck pocket. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> that sounds very sarcastic, Sophia. What do you mean by that? Baggy. It's a neck platform rather than a <laughs> pocket. A Although, to be fair, pocket. that Fender P bass I was working on the other day actually did have a good fit. Yeah. Yeah. Did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really nice. But I, oh, I we thought can we do could it both together. get in there. Yeah. So I've had too much coffee and my hands are shaking. <laughs> Our hands aren't fitting, go for it, Josh. Our hands are touching too much. <laughs> I hope you guys like watching people unscrew screws. Is that why you tune in? There's some I'm just gonna unscrew these screws. La 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 la. ASMR genius. Yeah. Is that the last one? Oh, yeah, I've got arthritis in my thumb. <gasps> Do you want me to do it? Oh, I've done it. Well done, that was perfect. Okay. What is that? It's a very big hole. I think it's something to do with the CNCing. Oh. Oh look, we can see. And see. So look, it's definitely, I mean. Why am I trying to figure this out? Man, I mean the way that that's torn out, it's just like yeah. super wide grain. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so something super wide grain, something that's grown really quickly. That looks like a little fox burrow or something that you'd find in the woods. It's like the most unclean yeah. hole. Not that it matters <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's just, it's why? Just that, it's just that, we, as we've already discovered, you're really pedantic. Me? Can we kind of like make the same assumption about this as we can about the fender? Assumption of what? That the finish is great. Mm. And that they've, I feel like they've, I feel like this is a much better example of how using really cheap rubbish wood for a body just feels more rubbish. Like it's quite interesting though about the tone, you know, the tone wood thing. Like I thought these pickups sounded quite good. This has an insanely rubbish body made out of crap wood. Did it affect the tone? I don't know. Oh look, I'm doing more screwing. Great, on camera. I have heard that the more dense a timber is, the less it will absorb the vibrations of the string, it will kind of deflect rather than absorb. And that can help sustain. Does that mm -hmm. sound true or does that sound like absolute BS? I think there are there is something to say for the, the yeah, density of the wood. I mean, yeah. you know, if you have, you know, as far as acoustic guitar, guitars go, when yeah. you have like a denser back and sides, like really, really stiff. Yeah. But that's an acoustic instrument, yeah. isn't it? That's the thing. It does the opposite, you know, like, I mean, Selma guitars are super stiff. They're like laminated ribs. Yeah. And the, you know, it's a lot snappier and short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you're using yeah. spruce tops, right? Spruce is a, yeah. is a softwood for a start, and mm. it's 
you know. So anyway, I mean, they're doing different things, aren't they? Yeah, Essentially, yeah, yeah. electric guitar bodies are just a big chunk of wood that you can fit everything to. What have we discovered today on our little journey? That even though, really, they sound good, I still just prefer the other one. <laughs> In theory, if you were to get a refret yeah. for some good quality frets, yeah. set up nicely, pickups changed, or, or then not. it's going to be, or not. These were all right. Yeah. Those ones weren't, but these ones were all right. So yeah, I know what you're saying. But you know what yeah, I yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, it would still work out cheaper mm -hmm. than an American standard strap. Do you care about the look and the feel, or do you care about the sound? Or do you care about Depends both? Depends if you're gigging, bro. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you're gigging, whatever. Anyway, yeah. look. Um, Thanks for coming with us on our journey into cheap guitars and really expensive guitars. It's been really fun. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, and please do comment because we do read them and we will respond to any questions that you have. Um, nice one, Sophia. That was fun. Take Cheers, it easy. Roll. Yeah. Tommy, who's behind the camera, just made a really, really good point that we didn't talk about. The power of the kudos of the brand and the effect that that has on your aspirations as a musician and how different you feel holding a Fender to a Fairclough, for example, or anything that people haven't heard of. I think it's a point that maybe we don't want to be true because it's annoying to think that amazing branding mm. can have such an effect on the way that we perceive an instrument and then how that instrument makes us perceive ourselves and our playing. We're just stupid humans, aren't we? And mm. it does. Human psychology. Yeah, that's right. 101. I mean, I you know, instruments are sort of, what, like the medium which you're trying to get your music through, yeah. aren't you? And I guess you want that, you don't want the instrument to feel bad when you're doing that. You don't want it to like hold you back. And I guess yes. playing a guitar which feels good, sounds good, and that you love, you know, there's not going to be as much holding you back from being able to fully express Absolutely. what it is that you want to through music. So yeah, and they've been, you know, not to get all soppy, but they've been tried. <laughs> they've been tried and tested, you know. So you've mm. seen they're just, you know, that a Fender is going to serve you well. It's like these guys haven't proved themselves yet, whereas Fender and Gibson have proved proved themselves time and time again mm. over the years. Not only have they proved themselves, they invented the goddamn things. This has ended up being quite philosophical, hasn't it? It's sort of deeply philosophical. Yeah, I'm feeling really highbrow. Mm.